Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Today we're here with a tutorial on how to use Open Media Vault with an MS-DOS NFS client. I'm going to take you through the server setup portion of the procedure, as well as the MS-DOS XFS client configuration. We'll start with the server. And before I forget, the procedure you see here is available in my Git repository, link in the description. So first of all, you need to have Oracle VM VirtualBox installed if you want to virtualize this setup. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the Open Media Vault website and download an ISO file. Though I've actually already downloaded it, so I'm just going to show you how to do it. So going to the website, you can click download, and then from there you can click on that stable button right there, and you'll get a nice ISO. With the ISO downloaded, we're now gonna create a virtual machine. And again, you can use real hardware if you like, that's fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and launch VirtualBox and we're gonna create a new virtual machine. I'll call it Open Media Vault, makes sense. And we'll set this to be a Linux virtual machine and then it's going to be other 64-bit. So there we have it, other Linux 64-bit. For memory size, I'm gonna give this a gigabyte of memory. It may not be necessary. And then from there, we're gonna create a virtual hard disk. And we're gonna make it a type VMDK because that's what I prefer. And then from there, it's going to be dynamically allocated and we can click create. With that complete, there's a few other things we want to do. So with the virtual machine selected, we can go to settings, network, and choose a bridged adapter for the network adapter. And then from there, choose your network adapter. I'm gonna use my wireless. And then also we're gonna to go to storage and add a second hard disk where we will be storing our Open Media Vault files. So just another VMDK disk is fine. You saw me click on the icon there, dynamically allocated. And then from there, the size is fine. You can make this bigger or smaller if you like. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the Open Media Vault ISO into the DVD drive or CD drive. So I'll go ahead and select that and we'll click open and we'll be all set and ready to start up the virtual machine. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do that. And I'll go ahead and get this dragged to the right place and turn off some things there. But first, let me press enter for install. Though if I don't get it in time, it actually proceeds on, which is fine. We'll see it go ahead and launch up to the installer. I'll make this nice and legible for you. I'll go ahead and press enter for English and then enter for United States and American English keyboard. You can make different selections if you choose. From there, we'll see some things get set up here and some auto detection, and we can put in the host name. Open Media Vault is fine, and I leave the domain name as local. From there, you can put in a root password. We'll go ahead and just make it password for our purposes. You can make it what you want and select our time zone of Eastern or whatever it is for you. And from there, we see we get an indication that more than one storage device has been detected. That's fine, press enter. And you can select the first one on the list. Perfect. This will go ahead and install. I've obviously sped this up. And once it finishes, we can choose United States or whatever your closest country is in a package manager, and then just enter for the proxy server. The installation will finish. When we hit continue, the system will restart. And now we're running Open Media Vault Server. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get logged in as root. And let's go ahead and edit some files to enable NFS v2. So the first file is this J2 file that you see me navigating to here. And we'll go ahead and load that up. And what we want to do is put quotes around that RPC NFSD count. So we can do that and then control X and then Y and enter to exit. We're gonna edit this Open Media Vault config file and add a new parameter. And the new parameter is going to be OMV underscore NFSD underscore count. And we're gonna set this equal to what you see me putting here, this eight space dash V and then a two. And that's going to ensure that we can have V2 compliance. It's kind of a hack, but it works. From there, we have to run two commands to make this stick. First is the stage run prepare command that you see me running here. I sped things up there, and then we're gonna run deploy run NFS. 
And from there, the configuration is all set and ready for use. At this point, let's go ahead and navigate to the Open Media Vault web page that is running off of this virtual machine. So I can just go to Open Media Vault, put in admin and Open Media Vault for the password. And with that, we are in. Great. So the first thing we're going to do is actually enable the NFS service. So I'll go ahead and navigate over to services NFS. And we're going to toggle that enable switch and click save. From there, we will be prompted to apply the changes and we can hit yes. This will take a minute, but I've sped it up for your convenience. So at this point, I strongly suggest you check your work to make sure NFS V2 is enabled. So back on the console, we can go ahead and run this cat command that you see here. So cat slash proc slash FS slash NFSD slash versions. And we should see a plus two in the list. If you see minus two, that means you did it wrong. Please repeat the previous steps. It's okay. We forgive you. So at this point, let's go ahead and set up a file system. So we're going to go back to the web page here and go to storage and then file systems. And from there, we can click on create. And now what we're going to do is choose that second disk. Let me make this a little wider so we can see it. And that second disk is going to be an SDB disk, as you see there. And we can click OK to create the file system. Once we see the operation has completed successfully or a file system has completed successfully, we can close that window. Now we can start to look at shares within the mount. So to do that, we can go over to the file system and click on mount. That's the first thing we have to do. The file systems don't mount automatically. So we'll go on down to storage file systems and we can find that SDB file system in the list there, as you see, and we can click on mount and that will mount the system. We do need to apply the change as we will see here. So we can go ahead and apply that and sometime later that will be applied and we'll be all set to go. Great. So now let's actually share out a folder, shall we? So to do that, we're going to go to services, NFS. This is where we enabled the service, but instead we're going to tab over to shares. As you see here, we can click add. From there, we can create a new shared folder. I'm just going to call it test and I'm going to put it on that SDB device that you see there. The path of test is fine. And we're going to change permissions to everyone because I like to live dangerously. From here, we can go ahead and specify a client. I'm going to say star as not to limit any clients. For privilege, we're going to give everybody read write. And from there, we're also going to set some extra options that we can copy from the procedure here. So I'll go ahead and copy those and we'll paste those right in there. And then from there, we can click on save to create the shared folder. And we need to apply the changes. So we'll click apply once again. So with the server complete, let's set up the client. So keep in mind that this procedure will not work on an 8088 based system, but will work on more modern systems. The first thing we need to do is go and download the client and you can see a link there. I'm not going to download it because I already have, but there's the link for it. So you can go and grab it. And once you download that, we will unzip that. I'll show that in a minute. You're also going to need a packet driver. If doing this in virtualization using the PCNet 3, you can download a packet driver from the link that you see here and you'll be all set. So that's what you'd want to go do. Also, if you're going to run this in virtualization, chances are good that your CPU is going to be a little too fast and the XFS tool does have a bug. So you need to grab the utility that you see there as well. So now let's go and put everything together since I haven't done that yet. I'm going to unzip the XFS 191 folder and I'm going to rename it to XFS. We'll also unzip these other folders here for the packet driver and for the patch for faster systems and we'll get all of those good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and rename that XFS folder and let's go into the packet driver folder and we'll copy the packet driver into the XFS folder. That way everything can be in one nice neat place. 
And we'll do the same for the patch because once again, I'm running this on a virtual system. So we'll grab that as well and paste that in that directory. Great. Okay. So now it's time to make some config changes. And the first thing we're gonna do is edit the hosts file. We need to set a gateway, we need to set a broadcast, a net mask, and an IP address for the client and the server. Now your server IP address could change from time to time, so keep that in mind, especially if you're on DHCP, but in any event, we'll go ahead and get things set up. So I'm gonna drag the host file into Notepad as you see here, and now we can make those changes I talked about. First, the gateway. Mine happens to be 192.168.1.1. Yours could be different, and probably is. And for broadcast, it's just gonna be 192.168.1.255, the last address in that range. And now I need to go find out the IP address of the Open Media Vault server. I'm just gonna ping it. Again, if this is DHCP, it could change. So we'll go ahead and put that in there and get that all set. And we'll call it Open Media Vault to match the server name. And from there, we'll go ahead and add an entry for the client. I'm just gonna pick an unused address on my network, which will be fine. And I'm just gonna call it client because I lack originality. And then I'm gonna delete that last line from the file and our host file should be good to go. So next up, we need to modify the init file. And we'll go ahead and change the first line there to say init client with the net mask and the gateway. For some reason, these are repeated again. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And then we're gonna take out the PC NFSD line that you see there and the login line. So we'll remove those. So now we're gonna modify the share. I'm gonna make it drive E. And this is gonna point to Open Media Vault colon slash export because that's the prefix for Open Media Vault shares and then test. I'll get rid of that mount LPT2 and that rdate speedy that you see there as well. And then from there, we have a much more condensed file available for us. That's good. Let's go ahead and save that. Next, we need to modify XFS bat so that we can set our network card driver and some other settings. Well, pretty much your network card driver. So we are using this AMD PCNet driver. I'll go ahead and put that in here. PCNTPK, INT equals 0x60. We don't need WinPacket because we're not using Windows. And I'll go ahead and not load high the XFS kernel, and we're all set here. Next, it's time to copy all of this over to your retro PC. And there's lots of ways to do this. What I'm going to do is use WinImage, and I'm going to take that directory for the XFS that we put together, and I'm going to inject that into a new floppy disk. So 1.44 megabytes is plenty. We can say image inject a folder and we can go and choose that. That was in my downloads directory. So we'll go and find that and select it. Click OK and then yes to inject. And from there we can do file save as to save the floppy. Make sure we change the type to be not compressed and make it a standard image file. I'll just save it on the desktop and we can close win image. At this point, I'm gonna use an existing DOS virtual machine. If you need help setting one up, comment below and I'll point you to a video. So from here, I'm going to put our XFS disk into the drive that we made just a minute ago. And we can start to copy some things over and patch the XFS tool program so that it runs on this quote unquote fast PC. So let's go ahead and do a quick reboot here. And once that reboot is complete, I'll make a directory called XFS, and I'm just gonna copy all the files from drive A to XFS, so let's go ahead and get that out of the way. And then from there, we can go ahead and run the patch CRT command to patch that XFS tool binary. So let's go ahead and put a full path in for that. And from there, say yes for a good backup, because of course we do, and it's done, great. We should be good to go. So at this point, we can run XFS. And when we do, we can see we have drive E mounted to Open Media Vault. We can go over there and do a directory listing, and we'll see there's nothing there. Or we can just go ahead and echo a file out and then do a directory listing since I had this backwards. And we can see that there is a file called out.txt. And if we go to the Open Media Vault server and have a look at the export test, 
out.txt, we'll see it contains the word hi. So there you have it, successfully set up. Thanks for watching.